I'm on your side. Are you? I am. Ma'am, we're gonna need to search you. Back off! How does something like Homeland become this constant for you? Like, wh why yes. did you keep coming back to her? Why did they keep coming back to you? You know, that's a great question because, you know, I, as a director, I mm -hmm. think, you know, I love directing in all different genres. But what kept me invested in Homeland is the fact that we constantly change. You know, that we're mm -hmm. constantly reinventing. And I love stories that have a big political view and very powerful characters. So that kind of juxtaposition between the macro and the micro. I love that we go and spend a week meeting with the intelligence community and that the question being asked is, you know, what's your deepest fear? What keeps you up at night? And that's where Alex and Howard and the writers go into the writer's room and come up with the narrative of the season. That is really thrilling to me, mm -hmm. to be at the cutting edge of that. It doesn't happen that many times mm -hmm. in a career mm -hmm. where you get the right combination of, you know, incredible writing and provocative, challenging work and such nice people. <laughs> we all like each other so much. The constants, of course, being Claire Danes and, and Mandy Patinkin, like Correct. what has it meant to be working alongside them all this oh, time? I mean, it, you're working with the best of the best mm -hmm. and also amazingly wonderful human beings. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, but these are my partners in crime. And again, they will go anywhere necessary. You know, however deep they have to dig, you know, they are there to do the work. And I think having such a complex female character that's so layered and now iconic, mm -hmm. you know, in that way. choreographed to live and die in LA. Yes, have, uh, isn't that crazy? It's wild. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm curious about your journey from choreographer to director mm. and how those skills all played in together to become one thing. So I was going way back into the dark ages. Um, I was a modern dancer and a choreographer. I was um, based in Tokyo, Japan. I wanted a cup of coffee one day and there were two coffee shops right in front of me in Shibuya Ku. And I sat down with this guy and he turned out to be an extraordinary person who spoke 12 languages, perfect King's English, and ended up three years later, not in that moment, telling me, he became like my mentor, but he told me a series of stories that I had to pass on and I knew it wasn't dance. So that is the only reason I ever directed because I was told these stories and I knew I had to do something with them. They were that powerful. So that's what I made my first film about. So I came in with choreography, but then I had so many other colors I needed to put in that paint box. And that's what the process has been. And you know, the thing that's so great about directing and being a storyteller is that you're always learning, no matter how much you've been doing it. You know, each time I start something new, it's like I'm starting all over again. Every time you take an episode on a, from a new show, that's a whole new learning oh, experience. Oh, always. Do you have any, are there any that really stand out in your mind as especially, I don't know, surreal or, or overwhelming maybe in a good way that just felt like a whole new world when you started working on the episode? You know, I, I, like almost every world you walk into mm -hmm. is a whole new world. Mm -hmm. And you have to immerse yourself in that world, whether it's Mad Men or whether it's West Wing or Justified or you know, Walking Dead, and, and even like look at Freaks and Geeks. That was like almost re-remembering one, one's own childhood, <laughs> you know, and growing up and connecting with that, you know, in terms of servicing the storytelling. Speaking of remembering your own childhood, yeah. I I've <laughs> wanted to bring up Now and Then, of oh, course. Yes. Um, I've been hearing about it a lot more recently, and I think it's because you are having the people that grew up with it, having kids of their own, maybe totally. showing them. Totally, yes. Has it been reflected back to you in any surprising way of you as it come back around? You know, it's so interesting because mm -hmm. when, when we made that film, I felt really compelled to tell, tell a story about what it was like growing up a girl. Mm -hmm. And there were no images of that whatsoever. There had been all these stories about, you know, growing up as a boy. And I, I felt like I really wanted to make something that reflected what is similar, because there's obviously mm -hmm. a lot that's mm -hmm. similar, but also what's different. And that summer that everything changes and you will never be the same again. Mm 
you know, and that was kind of the motivation behind that. And I love that it, you know, people hold that film in their hearts in some way. And that's an incredible thing. You know, you, you don't know what people are going to think, you know, 25 years later. But a lot of people grew up on it. And I think that it still resonates in some way. Did it feel like an uphill battle then to, to get that made? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Though, you know, everyone on board was really committed to getting it made. So, you know, we did get it made, you know, and and it did well, you mm -hmm. know, but it wasn't critically regarded mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, some people liked it, but it, it, but in general, that's exactly the, the response that you're saying is what the response was, you know. But I think young girls going to see that movie and going with their mothers and having that experience has sustained it. Yeah. The people that needed to see it found it. And, found it, yeah, yes. And absolutely. and it seems to last. Like last year, everyone got together again because mm -hmm. it was screened at the Hollywood Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of incredible. And it was like the largest screening they had had. And I hadn't seen the film in years because I don't go back and look at things after they're done. And it was just like, oh, my God, the impact. It was, it was palpable. And it was mm -hmm. really amazing to see it again after all this time. Yeah. I've spent my entire adult life trying to recapture the way I felt the summer of 1970. Hey, Kenny, where's the fire? Softball game, Kendall's Field. It's gonna be all boys. So what are we waiting for? That was the summer when everything started to change. When I started directing, I was always pulled to the material and not the format. And because my first directing jobs, the first one was for Steven Spielberg, how lucky is that? Mm -hmm. So there was never a sense that TV should not be visual storytelling. What I think you do have to do in TV is you have to know what the dollar scene is and what the 25 cent scene is. So if you have to move quickly, you better know what your story's about. So, but you still need to have a visual storytelling palette. And then the next director I worked for was David Lynch on Twin Peaks. Yeah. And right, right. so I never, I never looked at it as a lesser medium. I love the fact that now look at some of the best work. It's all happening in TV. Not that they're not good movies being made, but you know, I don't think anyone is, is saying, oh, look at how different this is. Right. I think now it's just storytelling. I'm already starting on a new project, mm -hmm. which I'm very excited about. I'm actually working with a writer who was on Homeland mm -hmm. for the first five seasons, who created uh, Cold Case and created The Bridge, whose name is Meredith Steam. And, and you know, you probably know that the Homeland writer's room, certainly in the beginning, was all showrunners. Mm -hmm. So... It, it, that's just extraordinary mm -hmm. that that happened. So Meredith and I, uh, when we were in one of our yearly intelligence briefings in D.C., uh, a man named Juan Zarate from Treasury talked to us about uh, terrorist financing and following the money. So riffing off of that, we kind of looked at each other, ooh, that's very mm -hmm. interesting. So we're doing a series, a part series for banker uh, for Amazon. I will direct all eight. She is writing all eight based on a novel called The Banker's Wife, which is, which is about the banks that do business with terrorists and dictators and money launderers and drug runners and all sorts of nefarious folk. Mm -hmm. So really exciting to be looking at that. No more about my loyalty. I did what had to be done.